Hi everybody and welcome to a short guide on how to breathe properly. In the next few minutes we'll give a simple overview of the process of breath hold training, preparation, how to breathe properly before breath holds and simple tips and tricks that will help you improve your trainings. Through the Stamina Apnea app you can easily train wherever you are, track your sessions and your progress. With dedication and the right knowledge to start your breath hold training, you will certainly reach your goals. First, the preparation phase. Find a comfortable position in a safe spot with a calm and relaxing environment around you. The best position for breath holds is when you don't need to use any muscle support, either lying on your back, shavasana posture, or leaning on the back of a comfortable chair. Avoid doing maximum breath holds in an upright position in case you get dizzy or are blacking out, which creates a risk of falling. Also, no cramped backs as we are not squeezing the lungs or making them any smaller. Another important aspect of the preparation phase is the three pillars of relaxation. Be aware of them before you start your training. This means first, all your muscles need to be inactive. Any muscle that is tense will naturally use oxygen. Second, keep your mind relaxed. If you are stressed, nervous or even scared, you will not do well. Find something that calms your mind and keep it close. And third, your breathing must be relaxed, not forced, not deep, not fast, normal. By doing this, we avoid hyperventilation, which brings us to our second phase, the calm breathing phase. Before an exercise, make sure to take a minimum of two minutes to breathe calmly and slowly no deeper or faster than you normally would. Our heart rate will beat slightly faster upon inhalation and slow down again upon exhalation. So we recommend exhaling two times slower than inhaling to calm ourselves down. The primary goal of the calm breathing phase is to reduce our heart rate, get into that relaxed state and get ready for a breath hold. Third, the final breaths. After a calm breathing period, you take one breath, 75% inhale, then exhale as much as you can without forcing too much. Then you take one more really deep breath in, 100% maximum capacity, as deep as you can manage. Always do breath holds with full lungs. Also, you should avoid doing multiple breathings because there are risks of hyperventilation and increased heart rate. Fourth, during the breath hold. Be aware of the urge to breathe. Don't push it away. At some point, you will most probably experience contractions. So let's quickly talk about contractions. When we hold our breath, the oxygen is being used up and converted into carbon dioxide, CO2. Increased carbon dioxide, the byproduct of your breathing and exercise, gives you contractions or involuntary diaphragm spasms. How to deal with contractions is a big topic itself. What's important to learn early is that we should treat contractions as our friends. That's how our body communicates back to us during long breath holds. Even though they might make you feel uncomfortable, you should do your best to stay calm and relaxed. Don't fight contractions, observe them. Fifth, first breaths after holding. Once you can't manage anymore and you hit your limit or just reach the end of an apnea interval, Take a few deep inhales to recover. Always focus on your inhales and not your exhales when recovering. Remember, passive exhale, active inhale. Follow this pattern even after short breath holds so it becomes a habit and you always do it properly, especially after long, challenging breath holds. <laughs>